Hi, I'm Michael Price. I'm a composer for film, TV, and, and other other projects. And I'm here uh, with the wonderful Paul Frith hey. and Andrew Davy, Davy from Bears Den, um, and we're chatting about Fragments, which is a beautiful new project. I've had the pleasure of listening to to Fragments, Fragments, and Interludes, and it's sort of for me, it's it's really interesting that on the album there are reworks where the vocal's still intact, and that those are are kind of um, in a way, if you, for people who know the original songs, they're, they're going to be more familiar because, you know, it's sort of the same structure. But there are... Uh, did four make it to the album? Four interludes in the end? Yeah, four, four interludes, yeah. Um, and uh, can you t tell us a bit how... W were they of necessity from the live show to get people from stage left to stage right, or was it a creative No, choice? no, it was, it, was, it was a definite choice and it's it's as I say for, for me it was it was about this idea of going from from the band all the way through to to kind of i suppose con contemporary classical if that's not too poncy a way of putting it oh, um, you're allowed. Music. Permission you. Permission thank, thank, thank you thank you <laughs> um and uh, actually i suppose uh, no one really knew what to do with it in the live show and i think that was a really interesting thing so because we started with um, we started with one of the interludes and the <laughs> like because I don't I don't play in them at all I was like I don't I kind of just want to listen to these and like so the band stood around I stood around and we're just like and and it, and you have this kind of orchestra playing it and and it's like it's awkward it's <laughs> genuinely awkward um, a marring it, 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 <laughs> and it is it's just like what, what do we do so right right from the get go of the, the of the live shows it was like. Oh, no one, no one had thought of this, and um, so maybe we made a little bit of a rob for our backs. But I, I loved them. I think they were kind of they they were a moment where you could kind of go back from the stress of actually playing to just mm. listening and enjoying something, and then kind of go go in. And and in the live shows, we ended up using them to separate. So it was right from the beginning. We 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 did one, um, and. Uh, the one we did uh, was based off of Isaac, uh, which is a track, and then we would go straight into Isaac, and it's the only yeah, because on the, yeah. they're both on the album yeah, and it's the album. only one where there is, and it yeah. was just it was just here's a really intentional kind of you can hear where this came from, uh, even though it's quite different, but that, um, and then we we separated a kind of middle section where the band just played on their own, so there was an intro and outro to that, and then right at the end we did we did a final one. So it kind of it bookended various sections within the live show. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know. Do you, do you, yeah, yeah, I just I love the interludes yeah. so 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 much. Just I think it's um, again yeah, it's nice when you don't when you can remove yourself from the context of what you're listening to completely and just and. Yeah, I mean, they're all very different as well and very unique in how Paul takes, I mean, I'm trying to remember the name, because we've got new well, names, Lightning, yeah, trying to yeah, put, yeah. Lightning Trying to Put Out a Spark, I think is the name of the Jew on the Vine one. Um, but well, yeah. I I, oh. that one, nope. Look at this, we've got, we've yeah, got bits got, of paper. Got, we've, got, hang on, we've got a few bits of paper. Yeah, this, see, this one, I, that one I, th I was fascinated with as well, because cause this little fragment at the start, this Jew... That I couldn't. I when I first heard it because it sounds so different. Because it's a beautiful piano yeah. and then the solo violin coming yeah. in, and that then that seemed really different to the to the original track. Yeah. W were you responding to a particular part of the track or? Yeah. So there's this there's this uh, it's it's, not, it's a synth line and it's a vocal uh, kind of line at, at the end within the and and it's and it's that uh, it is that line, but that line is hugely slowed down in in this and then i kind of it, it was one of those things where i just I, I, of all of the interludes that's the one where i just kind of went you know what let's just go yeah. let's yeah. go somewhere completely <laughs> different with this um yeah and it kind of switches from from the kind of major to the minor and all this kind of stuff but the uh, yeah i just i always loved that that melody in the in the in the original track um we at one stage actually had it on on trumpet but it, it then kind of got moved to synth i think and yes, then yeah, um yeah. and and it's always been one of those things i always want to play it <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you that, like, every time it comes up i'm like huh? uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah marcus is kind of doing it. i was like oh, okay yeah it does sound better it, it sounds oh. way better on the synth. but but so so for me it was just like it was 
get my revenge, I can actually uh, <laughs> do, 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 do so. And, and did when, so when you first heard the interlude uh, way back when the, the live show, had there been a process to sort of uh, excavate this this melody before, or was it something that, that you would bring and kind of go, I've always loved this, that was like a secondary thing in the, the yeah, original song? Like with that with very little explanation about it, which was, which was kind of what was nice about it as well, is kind of like, here it is, what, you know, this is where I went with it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was actually one of the first ones you did as well. Yeah. I feel like it was really early in the process. And I think it was the, that one I think is the most different from, and like in terms of like tracing it back to its original sources, sort of the most interesting journey back yeah. in a way. But I think because of that, the journey is, it's really special and it's really beautiful what, how the, the context of that melody for our song is so different to how Paul has used it to create something different. And I, lo I just love it to bits and it's really different. It's amazing. No, that's, it's really beautiful. And, and actually uh, the, the other first one that sprang to mind, <laughs> I, I love this, because a lot, a lot of the time with them, um, yeah, it seems it's hold it. No, it's there. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's uh, 120 gram paper. Yeah. Sticks. <laughs> 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 All that was left in the shop. The, uh, <laughs> because it's always, the, um, and from an arranging point of view, uh, Paul, in terms of, it's like, with a band that's got drums or percussion or programming, then I, I always think kind of momentum is always a, is always a challenge because you sort of associate often strings, particularly with sort of like with sustaining over the top, yeah. while something else does the does the momentum. And and so when I because I heard the interlude first, so this so the original track is Think of England, isn't it? And then Fire was flashing is yeah. the is the interlude tile. Um, I was I was fascinated with this because because I heard this as a piece of sort of spiky spiky sort of modernism. I just em embarrass us all. And it really kind of kind of percussive, like we're yeah. talking about your, your, your sort of piano writing before, um, and then and then you go back and hear the original track, and it's the, and it's the, it's the drum pattern, you know. Yeah. It's the kind of mm. so yeah. we how were you um, how were you approaching this one as it as it came out? So I mean, it, it, exactly that. I love taking rhythms and putting them uh, on. Uh, quite often strings, piano, that, it's, it's one of my favourite things to do. Um, and uh, because you get these huge contrasts, I, I, I think quite often, um, uh, particularly within within kind of the, the, the pop world, we don't do that enough. We kind of like, yeah, everything's just elongated and, and it's lovely and it's beautiful and it's saccharine. It's all, but, but there's also, there's these whole other areas of these instruments, which is like, actually, yeah, they can be quite narky. Um, so yeah, so it's just like, and, and that rhythm's quite funny, and I, I love watching uh, the audience do it because the audience tries to tries to it's like bam 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 bam, and and like yeah, even even when you know on, on the on the times where I I played with these guys, it's like, I'm there doing it, and I oh I've got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so. It's again, it's it's just like it, for me, like all of these things are just about playing with stuff, and it's like okay, well let's like I, I really want that, let's just chuck that on the let's yeah, ch let's yeah. chuck that between you know a couple of octaves. On, on the piano and you, you get that sense of, yeah, that, that, that sense of, of rhythm and then it goes into the nightmare, which I don't think <laughs> either of us will try I don't and play. Neither of us going to embarrass uh, ourselves with that. Um, but, but actually, yeah. I, I think that, that second side, just to play a little bit, that, that where, yeah. there's a, a lot of these sort of, um, uh, it, it feels like, and, it, and it's always sort of uh, admiring another, another composer's work and then sort of breaking it down in front of them where you can go, I really like this bit of your, your <laughs> stuff. The rest of it is terrible. Other things. You, you <laughs> happened upon that one. <laughs> one good idea. second long and it's just perfect. My favourite bit of all the but, but there's there's something about this kind of, um, uh, the, the way that you're getting the propulsion, the way that you're using cross rhythms to kind of keep everything moving forward. Yeah. Particularly in these fragments, which are you know sort of not more than two minutes, yeah. two minutes long, um, I find really sort of um, it, it it's not sort of traditional minimalism. It doesn't feel like it's sort of like oh, it's not Steve Reich or Philip Glass. You know, no. it, it, it's very much its own its own kind of thing. And it and it I, I wonder how much of that comes from the sort of musical world that is about being part of 
part of the band, really, you know, for, for all those years. Yeah, I, 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 it's really difficult to answer. I mean, as I say, I think there's, there's no in those kind of fun rhythms and those kind of the stuff that exist within within the music from when you've when you've written it. But also, I think it's, it's it's interesting with 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 cross rhythms and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it kind of even later it, it goes in. You, you've got this kind of almost like a four four over this kind of uh, six eight thing, you know. But and it should never feel. It's just where my head goes, rather mm. than going like, wouldn't this be clever to do at that point? If, if that make, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, anyway, we I don't know if it was recorded earlier, but when we were talking about kind of not writing with you know uh, clicks and and and, things like, and I think all of these kind of things, it just it, it should feel natural somehow. But that doesn't mean you can't have fun with it. And it's just like, oh, wouldn't this? What, what does this do? And I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I find it very difficult to describe some of those processes. <laughs> well, well, I think they're, they're really interesting for me in terms of when the process is sort of like on the outside of the building, like architecture, and when the process is sort of on the inside of the building. Mm. So with a, a lot of um, uh, thinking about the sort of like the, the differences between um, sort of songwriting and, and classical composing, I think sometimes in, in my experience, it, it is a it's about your kind of response to the to the structure and the material, yeah. and and sometimes the sort of like the structure of a of a beautiful pop song, if you if you want to call it that, is is probably sort of fairly given mm -hmm. in that you, you know you you've probably got an intro and a verse and a chorus and you know there's the, certain with, rules that are hard to sort of break or whatever yeah and and I guess certain sort of expectations as well if you, if if you if you break them you're you're breaking them within those expectations yeah. so it's hard kind of hard to get out of that framework um but then uh in in more of a sort of in a classical world if you if you want to call it that then Sometimes there, there is those opportunities to sort of build a different kind of building with the yep. same material, and and that's what I'm getting with with some of these in that they're sort of like little pieces of architecture. Yeah, I think kind that's, of taking a fragment yeah, but awesome. but building something. Yeah, and I think you know I think I think one of the interesting things to do with uh, for me music is you you start with very very simple elements and you 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 put them together and you turn it into. A, 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 Something that's complex, and I, uh, I, I think it's I think it's good to kind of try and stretch an audience, but you don't want to alienate them. So I think even within, uh, so I think architecture is quite a good way because you can start off with very simple things, and the ear gets accustomed to it, and then you add things to it and you build it up. And if you were just to play them in the middle of the piece or the end of the piece, then people wouldn't get it. But because they've those things have been introduced and taken out and 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 but I think there's something beautiful with that because someone's just like oh yeah they they can internalize it all or I don't know I don't know what the the right phrase is but it, it's yeah I, I I love that I love yeah. that kind of like yeah helping people hear things if that is definitely that and did and did it did it feel like um, that some of the insides of the songs were were being put on the outside when you hear these. Yeah, it, it, it really makes, all, I think it made for Kev and I, I think it was really interesting hearing what things leapt out to Paul and what were the, what were the sort of moments that Paul latched onto to build from. I think that was like with, um, with the dew on the vine, sorry, mm. the lightning trying to put out the spark. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to remember the new names. <laughs> and with fireworks flashing again as well, it's just which elements are the ones, like I think it's the same with in some ways, I imagine it's similar. You kind of need things to anchor yeah. and things to sort of subvert and go from. So it's just what are going to be your pillars of the temple that you're trying to build or whatever yeah, if you're going yeah, down yeah. the architectural <laughs> thing. What are, what's going to be the things that Where's are going to stay? Lift and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's going to stay? And then how can... And it's, so I guess, Paul, you must have had like, decisions in your head about like, do, how recognisable do I want this to be? Or do I want it to be a journey for them to figure it out during the piece? So like... I might keep the str the rhythm of the drum beat, but it's on strings now, so they might have a, a guess, but maybe won't fully know. And then yeah. maybe, I don't know, that must have been a real process. But for us, that was 
so interesting hearing that. So yeah, yeah. I imagine that was really fun to play around with. Yeah, no, it, it, it's definitely fun. I mean, you know, <laughs> sometimes I feel like maybe, maybe it didn't go far enough, and then every, you know, yeah, right. And it's so, but it's one of because I think if you know where you grab something from, yes. then it, it's always really obvious to you. Totally. But, and I think there's a definite. It, there has to be a, a, a. Everyone needs to be able to have the ability to go. Oh, I know exactly where that that came from. It, it, it defeats the purpose if they if they don't. I think. But yeah. well, one of the ones that, that that wasn't an interlude, but was was one of the tracks I, I was really drawn to um, was this broken parable, where. I, yeah, I, I just really I I loved with with some of the. As you're talking about the distance that some of these have travelled, and some have sort of like really gone a long way, and some have sort of stuck a bit closer to home, I was just really struck with, with this one. How hearing the the piano just play the, the it's just got an open fist at the front, isn't it? I say again, read it with with, uh, with the light in my eye, but uh, but basically just that sense. Hey, look at this. We could, we could go a tour together. <laughs> but that, there's something about the sort of the way that the piano works with with that that as those fifths are really kind of hollow sounding quite yeah. melancholy to to me anyway on sort of on first hearing uh and then this is another one where i sort of heard the the fragments version first and then went back and, and kind of go like that that feels the the musically it feels different but Lyrically, it feels like it was picking out a sort of melancholy. Yeah. It's got a weight to it. Yeah. I feel like that one has got like a new, like in a way that the actual originals, I don't know how to describe it. There's just a real sense of gravitas to the way that Paul's approached it. And it's like play, performing that one was probably the, felt the newest out of all of them. It felt like, and also it felt, you're talking about the age thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the ones that I massively did feel like this, what does this mean now? And what did it yeah. mean then? And back then it was a sort of much bigger kind of, I don't know, I think we were going to get running up that hill, Kate Bush kind of style <laughs> drum beat. And all that. <laughs> <laughs> we worked very hard on those enormous snares. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I think this one just, it, the mood it puts you in from the start is like, a, a, there's something ominous about it, something, yeah. but also it's a story you really want to like, dig into it's, it's i don't know but I mean, even even the, the name of the track like broken parable it just uh, it, it does it's it's weighty and so um i mean i uh, it's again one of my favorite things is actually it's just the it's just these held single notes on the strings and then these kind of really long slides down oh, over yeah. over it <laughs> and um and i love that it just kind of it it, it it, it almost kind of makes you feel nauseous or kind of like, you know, there's this kind of thing as he's, as he's kind of like, you know, and I don't know, that that kind of with the lyrics and, and, and yes, yeah, so these kind of like open, quite dark chords. Um, I just, it, was, it was so much fun. Just kind of like, just, yeah. It was like, yeah I mean, I, I'm just naturally a moody person. Yes. So it's just like, it's like um, uh, but I, th I, I think that sort of, you know, that there's a kind of, I think in a way, sort of a, a, there's each instrument or each group of instruments for, for me has got a, has got a really wide set of colours possible, but also has got a sort of a like a home base, yeah. Yeah. and and it feels like this this track was listening to it, I was kind of go oh yeah no, it's kind of like that that for me has that sort of central kind of um, like resonance of the piano nothing much happening very but yeah. sort of but very still and and. Because the string writing has got slides or glisses, yeah, as we yeah. would have said to the players, the, um, there's something that is, I, I think, incredibly human about hearing somebody move their finger. It, it has to be a person, you know. Yeah. You can't do it on the machines or you know, in any meaningful way. And and so there was there was something about this one that felt musically from me. It was kind of like ho home base for the <laughs> for the players. <laughs> And and I don't know whether you you felt from a from an arranging point of view whether this uh, this whole project with fragments and obviously with interludes being a part of that whether you feel like you've kind of have you said most of the things that you want to say in this in this sphere in this project or is are there major areas of colour that, that are left unexplored? Oh, there's there's so many areas of, of colour left unexplored. <laughs> and I think, you know, and, and, and it's... 
I mean, that's the joy of writing, isn't it? That, that we, you know, I, I think you can take things to extremities where they become almost useless or it, it becomes an intellectual exercise. Um, and I really, for, for me, music is sound that emotes. And so when you kind of get to those intellectual ed edges, it, 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 it stops doing that. It becomes maybe very interesting and there can be kind of things that, that you learn from those those experiences which you can kind of draw draw across. But um, but I think there's infinite possibilities even before you kind of get to there that, that yeah, I I still desperately want to explore with all sorts of things. So, you know, come the next album, I'll be. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think I, I'm all knowing you as well and knowing what it's like working in a studio with Paul. It's like, there's just, yeah, this is scratching the surface of what, you know, I mean, I know that like there's all the different little universes that Paul's written in across this. It's just like, and I also just know there's so, so much more and so many other places it can go. And it's like, it's just, yeah, it's really, really nice to be, you know, so just our paths to have crossed at this moment is really lovely, but it's just, I know there's, there's so much more to come. It's amazing. But I mean, I suppose the other thing I'd say is that I think within this, there should be, um, and I'd, it would be interesting to know whether you think it comes across, but for me, there should be a wholeness to it. So it wasn't, I, I, the intention was not to kind of go, oh, here's here's one track, this sounds completely different from that. There, there should be, through yeah, through threads or um, throughout the entire thing that you can kind of that, that's beyond just the fact that it's 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 bears den tracks. I think there is a there's a kind of oneness to the way to, to the way the tracks are because you know it was a it, yeah it, it was a concert that was that and now it's an album and that that yeah it, it should it should tie together. So I think that to a certain extent limits you in terms of how far you can push some of those other other timbres or whatever. Does can that make sense? Can I ask a really book, like, sort of simple question, yeah. but one that I kind of don't know the answer to. When did you decide and what and sort of what were the reasons would be when it's going to be mainly strings, it's going to be piano, and it's going to be strings? I, I yeah, so, uh, yes. I, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 because no, 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 we, because we, I, I remember there were like loads, of, loads of discussions like what are we going to do? Because, because originally, I mean, the whole thing, uh, we basically got commissioned to do this thing for the El Fermoni, uh concert hall, and, and and so there was this additional budget to kind of pull in all these, all these um, other instruments. And the reason I chose strings, I mean, I love writing strings anyway, was that there's so much that you can do with them in terms of it's. Uh, for me, of all the instruments, they're the closest to the human voice. You can kind of have those really like hugely emotional moments, but they can be massively rhythmic. And more importantly, Ersten have never used strings up until that point. So I was just like, this is going to be a fantastic kind of thing to just like, oh, have. Oh, I, I, just interjecting in there because you were a brass player, we still are a brass yeah. player. So your background was. Uh, brass bands plus jazz plus classical yeah. uh, but the sort of your your voice was was a brass one uh, well weirdly i mean most of the stuff that i do is is string based as well so i mean mm. well not not most of it but a, a lot of i do a lot of string string work and then uh, but just in terms of you guys you just never used you've shunned no, you've shunned the strings for, for so long yeah, and, uh, I feel, feel bad now yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. met some of the players they're great <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they're good on the tour yeah they're actually they're really nice people who <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> so. um and then i suppose the question is of why piano and i don't know i can't answer that i just i just thought it'd be kind of fun just to have a have yeah have a kind of there's a percussive instrument. There's like it's definitely like feels like there's like some more some more than others, but there's definitely songs where I feel like there's um, a cop like a serious conversation going on between them as well. It's like yeah. the strings will cut out and the piano will suddenly go into like doing interesting. I mean, particularly yeah. on crazy polyrhythm towns. On uh, <laughs> uh, which song is it? The one we get the da -da 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 -da, like the Think of England one, the fireworks flashing yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But how the strings and the piano sort of interact and converse that's yeah. like i mean it's yeah it's really awesome it's just like i it's not something you hear all the time it's like a combo so it's just awesome well i mean i think I, i'm interested in it as well as um in terms of you sort of like coming through with your own with your own composition work and then this arranging strand and uh because the um other bands the xs xx no, obviously not um 
uh, saying uh, the Burns Den aren't the only band in the world. Oh, yeah. So, absolutely terrifying. <laughs> but but you, the, the sort of, had you always seen um, the band arranging and your own composition and then film and TV as sort of separate areas or natural uh, overlaps? I think, there's, I think there's natural, massive natural, massive natural overlaps. Is that a way to put it? But I, I, I think there are. And I think, you know, the reality of music these days is you, 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 have, to, you have to cover a, a, a broad range of bases, but I think all of those can be very complementary to each other. And uh, again, we, we were talking earlier about kind of breaking out of your patterns. And I think when you, uh, so if, if, if you work with a band and you're doing an arrangement, then you're forced to work within those constructs and, and therefore you you figure out how to deal with uh, those problems in, in terms of, 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 of uh, you know, I don't want the strings to, to take over from from this, but, I, but they also need to have their own voice or there might be kind of lines that you, you, you put in and you're also constantly deferring to what the, what, what the, the band wants. And then you get kind of when you, you compose on your own and, and you just go, Okay, this is a fantastically interesting thing to, for me to to be able to, and then you get film work, which I think is kind of almost a, a medium of those two things, where you're writing the music, you're you're in control of it, except for there is you know a director or a producer, depending on whether you're doing, doing TV or film, to, telling you no, that's rubbish, or or that's great, or could you make it more like this, and and so all of those new experiences, I think you know from film that might then inform what you do as an arrangement or might then inform what you do in your kind of own stuff but i don't know what, how, how would you answer that question as as you do the same thing yes <laughs> with with uh, tired eyes and, and, and not enough sleep i i i'm always fascinated about the the core of individual artists in terms of how we see their work mm -hmm. and then as you get to know them to get to know the kind of hinterland of, around them because it's that's always surprising the number of sort of people that i've met who i'd met them in the capacity of they might be a film director but it turns out also mm -hmm. they're interested in this architecture dance literature painting five-side football you know just yeah, sort of yeah. there's an and then you, you have this kind of, um, on a good day, this really rich overlap where y you yourself don't compartmentalise things too much. Sort of give yourself the freedom to, to bring your own kind of, uh, your own range of interests into, into, into what you're doing, which is sort of, I mean, it's lovely coming, coming to this beautiful studio that we're in today where, uh, where you and, and some friends and colleagues work walking through a photography area yeah. first with some beautiful old cameras into into this music studio and these sort of overlaps between between all the art we all make it it feels like actually for people who who make it that's perfectly natural yes it's just that from the outside you kind of go but but you're a film composer that's what you do you can't be interested in anything else yeah. and i don't know whether david you found the same same with the band in that it's sort of you know, the, there's a perhaps a, even a commercial pressure to to, to do one thing, mm. and and was that did that uh, was that part of everybody's thought process of doing fragments? Did it feel deliberately different, willfully different? I think it's so many interesting things that we just said. So it's like <laughs> yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. Yeah. Um, so much better answer than mine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, can we rewind? Can I, can, I, can I just give that answer? Yeah. We could do that later. We'll just do we'll that later. There's a machine you could do that with. <laughs> um, I mean, I think with with fragments, I think um, I think Paul, you said about patterns and about what how you just you have natural patterns of doing things, and I think as a band, we're trying to find ways. I mean. I think it's also a part of it is to kind of keep your music interesting and alive as well. You have to be creative and performing that's a big part of that, but also challenging what you've made and allowing others into it and playing with different musicians and allowing new like composers to come in and completely rearrange everything. It's just a part of kind of, I, I think it's uh, sort of narrow minded to think that you completely understand the scope of what you've ever made and I think when someone covers your song you learn that pretty quickly or when you hear a piece of music performed by an orchestra and you go whoa okay that's 
you need all these other different elements for it to work and breathe and live and stuff. Um, and yeah, so I think there is a sort of, um, a, perhaps there is a slight pressure on people to stay in their lanes within music. Um, but I think even from this conversation, I think I definitely feel like, oh my God, these guys are like real musicians. And it's like terrifying. But I think, we're, I think we all feel a bit like that from this conversation. It's like, everyone feels like, oh, I can't really play piano. But I'm like, I actually, like, seriously guys, I think there are levels here. But like, I feel like everyone has this um, fear or this sort of notion that the way they do something isn't quite right or whatever, but that's kind of also where the magic of it is. And, um, and so, yeah, I think it's, a lot of the time it's just getting over your own sort of worries about that and actually realizing that, I don't know, I love it when you when I hear bands doing things that are interesting. I mean, I know this is a different realm altogether, but it's like I've been listening a lot to a Taylor Swift album that was produced I by Aaron Desner <laughs> and I think it's amazing. And then I think, and then you see like Aaron's brother Bryce Desner does string arrangements and is yeah. a fantastic composer in his own. And you're like, I think it's, um, music doesn't have to be all these boxes and it's I don't think it's the musicians that create the boxes I think it's the stuff around it and I think maybe like without the pressures of performing perhaps or actually this period of time which is so strange for everyone is actually a chance where people can experiment more and not be you know not have to think about the next live show straight away and actually just try things out with different artists I'm, I'm doing tons of different writing sessions at the moment and it's really this is what it's like writing with this guy. This is what it sounds like with this person singing those words. And it's, you learn. Yeah. And it's so fun.